Camera is rolling and everyone is set. This is proper take, take four and three, two, one, action. <laughs> Wasting another day was it like the title track or the opening track, should I say, of the album? And um, when when I wrote that song, and I sort of felt that that was kind of like almost the blueprint for the album. It was kind of like where the songs were going, and every I felt every other song had a had a connection in some way, and that would kind of be how the body of the album would, would would sit, you know. After leaving Sony and after the whole year of start thinking about that, one or two big massive years, and there's a lot of downers. There's up, you know, the business is full of ups and downs, you know, and. I, I, so this song kind of sums up those, you know, those years and that time and kind of the journey that I was on, and it's, it's just all about you know not wasting another day, not you know not moping around. Uh, this was kind of I think these songs on this album was like they felt like where I was going initially before um, you know before the TV show before Eurostar, before I got discovered on that. It's a very um, minimalistic type of, type of production, you know. So, um, you know, there's, there's bits of guitar, bits of percussion stuff on it, but besides that, it's, it's really, a, it's a sort of an acoustic folk album, I suppose, you know. So it's, in that respect, it's, it's something different for me. It's something that I haven't recorded in that style for a long time, and it's just really nice to do an album that, you know, where the songs speak for themselves. It really isn't about, you know, anything else except kind of what the song and what the vocal and what the message is in it, you know. We are an unstoppable train And I just can't seem to find my feet again We both have like nothing has changed and I just can't seem to wash away the pain uh, uh. Unstoppable Train, I can remember the day I wrote Unstoppable Train because, or at least I started writing it, um, it was an email, I, I was on the radio and I heard, somebody read out an email, one of the radio shows, um, a, they got from a, a girl who was in a relationship where they were in a, you know, a husband and wife or whatever and they were having real difficulties in their relationship and it was just that um, they seemed to be going different directions and uh, the broadcaster said like something like yeah it's like you know being on an unstoppable train it's really hard to stop this motion when you're in a in that kind of a scenario where you're in a relationship as you're really deep into it and you know there's a lot of other factors involved and you just can't just you know wake up one morning and decide that you want to end it it's the kind of song i don't think i've written anything like that before to be honest You can live, you can die, you can stay in this border town. You can love, you can hate, you can pray in this border town. You can go, you can fly, you can stray from this border town. But you just can't leave, cause it's in your blood. It's in your veins, this old border town. Oh, I don't know. Border town is just, you know, I grew up in a border town on the border with Northern Ireland and uh, it was during the Troubles, you know. Um, at the time, I mean, when I was growing up, it didn't seem like it was any big problem, you know. So, and, um, but when you look back, 
uh, there was some just uh, horrendous kind of horrific stuff that was going on kind of around you but I was a little bit you're a little bit oblivious to it as a kid or as a young person you kind of just want to be a kid and grow up. I suppose with the the turmoil and just world economics and just especially with Ireland how, how it came through uh, the whole Celtic economy and now it, the town seems to have just lost its soul and it's lost you know it's a really difficult thing to watch when you know and love this kind of little place. I mean I grew up in the main street on that town you know I, I know every bloody inch of it you know. I had the idea for the song um, in Ireland and you know the, the lyrics and bits and pieces but I finished the song and wrote it when I was in America because I felt like I felt like I needed to be away from there to kind of address it. The first time I played it was during the gigs in the States and it got a great reaction. So I knew I had something in it as well that I had kind of nailed it. And um, yeah, I'm really proud of that song. I really probably, you know, if, if I had to put my, you know, my finger on one song that I could, you know, that sums up the album and, the, you know, for me, or that would be Barter Time. Let's take a walk to see what all the talk is about for the tides are turning here now Living in our time Living in our time Whoa, Let's take a walk Living in our town is, is um, it was written really at the height of the Celtic uh, Tiger, you know, when things were economically fantastic in Ireland. We had this uh, kind of raving sort of economic boom and there was loads of jobs and loads of work and uh, we had loads of people coming into the country and we had never as a nation experienced that before. This was the first time that people had, like, if you want to say, migrated to our country. And, you know, we were always used to emigrating. We've done that for generations and generations since, you know, primarily since the famine in Ireland, you know. So, and I just felt that um, there was an undercurrent of racism in Ireland that we never, ever had to deal with before. We had sectarianism in Ireland, like, from, you know, from way back in the Troubles in the North. But this was racism, like, that was known throughout the world that we had never ever really had a deal with in, in Ireland and it just came lock, stock and barrel to our door. You know, I think we are in no position like as Irish people to like to be racist and be in any shape or form because we are I mean, we are one of the, the, the smallest nations in, in, the, in the world that have managed to go and you know sow our seeds in so many different nations and be welcomed and prosper. We should be a little bit more um, tolerant of other people coming into the country. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm a practical man in a practical world. I lead a practical life. I need a practical girl, and I'm practically sound, and I'm practically cool, and I'm practical. My heart uh, Practical is uh, a really fun kind of song, but it's, uh, there's a bit of a story behind that. And it's the oldest song on the album. I've, I, I've, I recorded that for a B-side uh, on a single uh, a few years back uh, on one of the Sony singles, and it never quite we never quite nailed it properly, you know. And um, I was all the time doing it in the live set and when I went to the States because of the nature of what I was doing in the States was a lot of solo gigs and a lot of the solo um, tours and stuff um, the agency there said you know we love you know practical and they didn't realize that I had kind of demoed or recorded as a b-side and um, so that was one of those songs that they they kind of nearly insisted and I didn't mind because I kind of wanted another shot at recording it and, and uh, it's one of those songs that gets a really good reaction, a tremendous kind of reaction at, at live shows. Tragic This is tragic When the magic disappears You don't belong Moments We have 
that moment Now those moments shape me right down to the core A uh, song tragic is um, it's one of those kind of funny scenarios uh, in a relationship when you've known somebody really, really well, um, like intimately, and uh, and then you decide to ignore each other, uh, even on the street and whatnot. It's kind of like it's like you know people that shouldn't have any secrets. You know, if you see someone naked, like there shouldn't be any secrets. You know what I mean? <laughs> So, so it's like, it's when you meet that person that you know, you've really had a close relationship with and you were intimate with and all those kind of things. And then you kind of can't even look at one another in the street. So it's just a little observation of that. It's just a funny kind of uh, twist on that, I suppose. So that's what tragic is about. It's, you know, a bit of fun. It's a bit of, you know. any, uh, any real life scenarios that made you write No, it was, it was just completely observational. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Stop chasing ghosts. You know you gotta move on, move on. The stranger the most. You know you gotta be strong, be strong. Cause you're deep ocean blue. I try to understand you. I spoke straight to your heart Now I'm left in the dark All I need is time Just a little bit of time Just enough to find Find a way to make you shine All I need is time just a little bit of time Just enough to find Find a way to make you mine All I need is Time is like, it's, again, it's, it's just a reference to like trying to... Uh, it's, it's, it's done sort of in a, a relationship way in so far as that it's someone, you know, speaking to someone else who's come out of a relationship. It was kind of based on, a, on, on somebody that I know who'd come out of a relationship and who was still living in that kind of relationship but kind of having another relationship. <laughs> we couldn't let go of the past. It's basically about, you know, either let it go or, or don't, you know what I mean? And uh, I've learned to try and live in the moment and live in the day and appreciate things around you. We all the time look towards, you know, next week, next month, I'm going to have enough money to do this, or I'm going to be, you know, and, you know, we never sometimes just appreciate the fact that we just have a lot of really good things happening in our lives on a daily basis, you know, and just enjoy your surroundings, enjoy the people that are around you, enjoy, you know, the work that you're involved in. Just a little bit of time, just enough to find, find a way to make it sound of the album is, I think it's contemporary folk. Some of the songs could have went anyway. You could, like, there's some of them you could really have dressed them up and brought, you know, full band production into them and made them, like, full on kind of almost, um, you know, rock songs or whatever, you know, acoustic rock songs or whatever. But um, the, um, the producer, John Condren, who, who produced the album, he was just very, uh, you know, very adamant that the songs would be allowed to breathe. What you're hearing is a really true reflection of the guitar and the voice and that's why I think it translates really well live as well because we haven't really changed it so much, even the arrangements of the songs and whatnot. The hopes, my hopes for the future are to just keep writing good songs and recording good albums and getting to as many places and people with the music as I can. That's really what I want to do, you know, with this album and with whatever albums and whatever songs I can muster up between now and the end of my time here on this beautiful air. <laughs> That's it. Simple. Find a way to make you mine. All I need is time.